Loco movie star Armand Ocamp is joining me in studio. He has an exciting new movie coming out, and he's been nominated for two Channel 24 awards. Hello. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Now, congratulations on those awards. Thank I you. Think I, a round yeah. of applause. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've been nominated for Best Instagram Account and Juiciest Instagram Account. Yeah. Is that right? Juiciest and Best. Juiciest male, sorry. Ooh, best Instagram account better. and juiciest male. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm not sure what a juicy male is. I don't, I don't know <laughs> either, but <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a, good, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Juicy. Now, I want to talk about Instagram with okay. you. Yeah. So you have, you, um, I think a lot of people have been voting for you, honestly. I don't know Do how, so? I don't know how Do many. Do you have some inside information? Look, I don't want to reveal too much information. I don't What's have the all the answers. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Yeah. So tell me about your Instagram. How do you choose what's going to go on your Instagram and what's not? Um, I'm not a big fan of selfies, mm. but I do like I do like showing what I'm busy with. Yeah. If I'm with someone, I do do a selfie now and again. You have to. But I'm going to make you do a selfie oh, with really? me. Okay, but well, that's okay. There are two people involved. Okay. Um, but doing it like alone in my bedroom at night, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I. Yeah, I just want to keep it interesting and, and diverse, and, uh, and I really love art, so mm -hmm. I, sometimes uh, I follow some really great illustrators. So I like sharing art, not yeah. my own stuff, but then but the anything that I find visually appealing, I think that's what Instagram is about. It's about sharing a visual representation of what your likes and dislikes yeah. are. Yeah. Who's your favorite person to follow on Instagram? Um, there's this artist called Logali, mm -hmm. and she does weird, quirky... Um, illustrations of, of little people so like a little girl in a boat made out of Siamese cats I don't know I like that stuff sounds like very that. interesting <laughs> yeah and, and gives us a little depiction as to what's going on in your head I don't know juice <laughs> juice. <laughs> juice I don't think that's where the juice happens <laughs> the juice. <laughs> what celebrities do you like to follow um, I like to follow Don't, don't, <laughs> don't even whisper oh, that. Okay. Just say it Swift, loud Taylor and proud. Swift. Oh, say I it loud like, and yeah, proud. Yeah, loud and proud. Now I'm blushing. <laughs> you are blushing? <laughs> are you a fan of Taylor Swift? Yeah. Yeah, do you like her latest Instant album? It's good mood. I know. How can you go wrong? I know, Taylor. Yeah. She just, oh, she just got it right. Definitely. Do you have a guilty pleasure? On Instagram? On anything. Speaking of Taylor Swift, that's how, <laughs> that's how that, that came out. That is my out. guilty pleasure. <laughs> um, yeah, tying into to, to, to Taylor Swift, I do like, I'm a sucker for a catchy pop song. Mm. What's mm. your favorite pop song at the moment? Um, Sia. Anything Sia, but Sia's not really pop. I mean, mm. I think she's the next level. She, I mean, but I'm obsessed with Sia. Um, there's a new song out. I don't know if it's released, but I found it called Bird Set Free. Sia? I haven't heard it. Amazing. Should I Google it? Please. Okay, I will. Can we put it as a backtrack to this interview? We can try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make any promises, oh, but damn. maybe at this very moment the song will play. Okay. Or maybe it won't. <laughs> 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 All right. You have a movie coming out next year. Yeah. It's called Daniel Monroe. Mm -hmm. And you play Daniel Monroe. Yes. Tell me about Daniel. So Daniel, mm, Daniel has found himself in a little bit of uh, hot water with the law. Um, and uh, also with his environment, his car breaks down in the middle of the Tankwa Karoo, which is, like people say, oh, the Karoo, the Karoo on the N1, no, this place, we actually shot in the Tankwa Karoo, mm -hmm. and there is nothing. There's no cell phone reception, there was no electricity, no running water, so, and we stayed in a beautiful, uh, on a beautiful farm, but everything was green in terms of there yeah. was a solar panel, and if the solar panel ran out, there was no light, we had one light. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was quite nice to be put into that kind of space um, and being frustrated as he would be. So that was really great. And then it's just his, his journey over a weekend of have, being forced to stay in the Karoo for that weekend. And then going through a little bit of a catharsis and, and just finding out what's really important in life. And, and then I don't want to give too much away, but, but his, yeah, his little three-day journey mm -hmm. of, of coming to terms with himself and life and what's important and what's not. What was it like for you to shoot in, in circumstances that I guess you wouldn't be used to? I mean, it, it sounds like you had to be completely self-sufficient. Yeah, I really, I mean, the production team was, a, you know, they were incredible. But I think that I really enjoy that kind of stuff where it's really immersive and you, mm. there's no pretend because you're there in, 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 in kind of the, the world that, is, that we're trying to create is already there. So, so that helps a lot in terms of making something really authentic. 
Um, so the frustration is authentic and the heat is real and the thirst is real. So I mean, that's, yeah, that kind of stuff. Mm. I, really, I really enjoy it when I get to work on projects that's, that are immersive like that. Like we were speaking about uh, a little bit earlier about the Canadian thing. Mm. You worked on the Book of Negroes. Yeah, and, mm. um, and that was set in the t at the turn of the century, end of the 17th century, and we shot in a little town that is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's been preserved perfectly as it was. So you immediately, you're surrounded by this world. And it just makes something, you know, it just makes it easy and real to like get into that world and that headspace. That must be what every actor wants, really. Yeah, and it seldomly happens. Mm. So I think when it does happen, it's, it's something special and, and, and you need to, you know, give thanks for that. Yeah. Now, without giving away too much, tell me, what was your most fun or exciting or enjoyable scene to shoot in Daniel Monroe? Um, it was, so there's, a, there's, a, there's an action sequence towards the end, there's a, there's a chase, I'm being chased by two guys, cops, um, and, it, and it, won't, it won't make the cut, but the very first take we did, um, it had been raining heavily, so the whole, the whole terrain was clay mud, mm. and the very first take we did, um, I like bash through them and I push them out the way and then I run, but then I was having fun. So I just kept on running and then I made a corner, but I could have stopped long ago. And I took the corner and I slipped and I just tore in the mud, tore this expensive suit to smithereens and we only had one. Now we're like 500 kilometers from any sort of form of <laughs> civilization. So I was trying to be funny and then, and then I hurt myself really badly and tore the suit, the only suit we had on the first day. So then what happened? So then we stitched that knife. <laughs> did, you, did you have to stitch it? No, it oh, was, okay. was a, a very sufficient or efficient seamstress on set as well. That would have been a real repercussion yeah. if they made you stitch it, <laughs> stitch it together. But that was fun. That was and pain and very painful. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me about running scenes. I've actually always wanted to ask actors yeah. about these scenes where they're running away from people. And I don't care how fit you are. I really feel like you're going to be really out of breath after after that. Does, was that the case um, for you? Or? Yeah. Sometimes. Well, it depends on the camera, some, on the lens that you're mm. on, because. You can't run full speed. If, you, if you've got a lens that's quite tight, you have mm -hmm. to pretend to run fast while running slowly. That must be hard. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what, you know. Like a Baywatch kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough life. No, I'm kidding. But so if it's a really long lens, far, with the camera's far removed and, you know, you're this big running across, then you can run fast. But um, yeah, I think um, they seldomly, you know, you start running. They'll mm -hmm. show you start running and then they'll cut to you running again. So you can be out of breath because there's been some time lapse. Okay. You know what I mean? So that's good. Yeah. They have your back. Yeah. And then you always pretend to be more fit than you are. You, like, you know, like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And they're like, no, but you're sweating profusely. Like, please just stop for five minutes. I think everybody does that. We have not enough powder for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, I'm fine. They're like, no, you're not. <laughs>